Hi guys, so it is rainy season down here in Florida, uh, and that means that we're going to start finding more and more snakes in the road. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and clean out my freezer of the snakes that we've collected over the past couple of months. We get them here and there during this, you know, the, the colder months, but this time of year they start really coming up and we're going to start getting more and more. So I'm cleaning out my freezer in preparation. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick video on how we go ahead and skin and pin and dry them. And then uh, that's just how Mark uses them for tabs. This is how any boyer is going to want them if you want to send out some uh, snake skins to put on your back of your bow. Uh, so let's get to it. All right, so we've got a couple species here today. Um, this is the Eastern Diamondback. We've got the Pygmy Rattler. Um, this is a banded water snake. Let me try and pull him into the light a little bit so you can see him. They often get mistaken for the, um, the cotton mouth or the water moccasin. And here is a nice water moccasin so you can kind of see how similar they are. You get the two of them together. So you can see. Same, very similar. Often get mistaken. Alright guys, I am going to use rubber gloves. I usually don't, but because most of these guys were found as roadkill and I've got a couple small cuts on my hands, I'm going to go ahead and glove up. I'll start with this guy right here. He's a uh, nice water moccasin or cotton mouth. And I like to work with them frozen. It's a little bit easier to work with them, plus it's uh, not quite so unnerving. Um, they do take a while, their nerves take a while to kind of die off, so even if their head is off, they are still kind of moving when they're fresh. And it uh, gets a little unnerving, a little freaky. So I like to freeze them, and then that way I know that they're dead because they're not moving. Um, and I do like to take the heads off before I do any of this stuff, just don't want to get pricked by any teeth. I don't know, if, I know they can still inject poison after they've been dead, but I don't know how long after they've been dead? Like, if you just prick a tooth, will you still get injected with their venom? I don't know. So, I just remove their heads just to be safe. And he's, of course, going to give me some problems. When you freeze them, you really don't want to thaw them out all the way. You just kind of want them thawed out enough that they're pliable and their, their skin is loose and moving from their bodies. Um, since most of these are roadkill. I'm not going to be saving the body or anything for anything. Um, they're rattlesnakes. You can eat them. I don't know if you can eat water moccasin. I mean, in theory, you can eat anything, right? But they kind of have this nasty, musky smell to them. So it doesn't usually smell very appetizing. I'm going to go ahead and just once you slit down the belly, the skin will just peel off real easily once you get it started. Just show you. They're a little slippery. Go ahead and just rip straight from all the way back to the vent. You don't really get too much skin past that vent. Those scales that are around the vent are really hard to pull past. So I always just cut it off. There you go. You got your, your skin. Um, if you find any and they happen to be in their molt period, don't even bother saving them because we've tried. It just doesn't really... This color's not very vibrant and the skin, the, the scales always kind of peel. Um, if they're dirty, you can go ahead and rinse them with water. I don't like to use too much water because that just kind of absorbs into the skin and then it takes a little bit longer to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and move my camera and show you how we pin them. Alright, so here's that skin again close up. This is the uh, water moccasin. You can see it's got some really neat banding and stuff. We're going to go ahead and pin this. This is just some uh, foam insulation from Home Depot. And uh, we've used a couple of different things, but this seems to kind of work the best. And then you just pin it just with some normal, normal pins. 
seed pins, I think is what they're called. And you want to try and get them as straight as you can. So I usually pin the top, and then there's a line right here that you can barely see in the middle. So you just kind of want to get that straight as you can. And then working on either side, you're just going to pin and go the whole way down. And stretch as you pin. You want to do the flesh side out. Okay, let me... I usually like to, once I get started, I'll do two at a time. That way I can stretch it and pin it as I go. And that keeps that, that center line nice and straight. So just pin it to get it started and then pull them out and stretch. There's not too much fleshing on these guys. Uh, sometimes you get it around, around the belly area, it'll stick. But, um, that usually gets trimmed off anyway. We don't use the belly area. So I don't worry too much about flushing them out. Unless they're kind of bloody and nasty, then you, got, then you have to. It just depends on how they've been killed. Sometimes with these roadkill ones, they're a bit of a mess. Go ahead and move this board up. And it's best if you're working kind of vertically. Let me see if I can hold this with my knees so I can show you guys what I'm doing. It's best if you're working vertically because you got gravity on your corner keeping it nice and straight. Um, if you have it on a table and you're working horizontally, it kind of, it's, they, it moves from side to side a little bit easier. Okay, let me just hurry up and get the rest of this pinned. Yeah, I've been noticing a lot of, um, I found some baby black racer snake eggs the other day in the yard. So they're hatching. These water moccasins and the um, eastern diamondback rattler that I have over there, they do live birth. They'll carry their eggs inside of them and then birth them, usually in late summer, early fall time frame from what I was reading. All right, to show you guys a little bit closer what we're doing, go ahead. This is a banded water snake. Gets misidentified a lot as a um, copperhead, or not a copperhead, a uh, water moccasin. They do look very similar. This is a non-venomous snake. So it doesn't have the pits in the, uh, the face like the pit vipers or, you know, the, um, the water moccasins and the, the rattlesnakes are all in the pit viper family. So it doesn't have the pits. It doesn't have the triangular shaped head or anything like that. Um, Mark likes to call them angry eyebrows. And I'll show you on, this water moccasin still has its eyebrow, its head. So Mark, calls these angry eyebrows. Doesn't he just kind of look a little angry? Sometimes the hardest part is just cutting through the belly scales. Trying not to cut into the gut. This part's a little bit easier when they are alive. If you have another person, because they're still usually moving. Unless they've been dead for a little while anyway. Just cut right down the middle until you get to the vent. Nice cut. And then I'm going to peel this away. Try and do this so that way I can show you what I'm doing. Just getting my finger in there. Peeling that away. Start on the other side. Kind of meet in the middle there. Oh, I'll split a little bit. It's all right. Okay. I got a hold of it. And I'm just going to go ahead, pull it apart. Mm. Okay. 
cut it off once you get to the vent. Go ahead, drop the body in a bucket. And there we go, we have our nice banded, banded water snake. Like you can see, they look very similar to the water moccasins. Have it guys, um, how we go ahead and skin and pin and dry our snake skins for our tabs. And um, again, if you find any snakes or if you kill any snakes that you want as um, for Boyer to put on the back of your bow, this is how they're going to want it done. Um, <clears throat> this foam board, you can pick it up at Home Depot. Um, this is what I like to use. It's got this um, coating on, or this um, I don't know, foil coating on it, so that way you can then clean it. But some styrofoam or some cardboard would work also. And uh, just a tip, when you are pinning, you want to follow the line in the back from the spine. That's there from the spine, not the sides, because your chances of cutting it exactly in the middle the whole way down are pretty slim. So uh, just follow that line and get them nice and, stra nice and straight. I'm going to take this board and I'm going to put it underneath some fans in Mark's shop and it'll take about two or three days for all of them to dry and then you just pull the pins out uh, we trim off the edges and then we just store them in a bin all right so these have been drying for probably about three or four days I was slacking a little bit and got busy doing other stuff so at this point they're nice and dry and they're like paper so let me go ahead and just take one of these off doo -doo -doo. The pins sometimes kind of stick, so you just give them a little twist and they'll come out. Like I was saying earlier, some of these are a little too small for Mark to use for his project, so we'll save them and use them for other things. Get that pin out. There you go. Nice dried, just like paper. So when you want to use them for a project, they do still have their scales on them. So you can take like a back of a, a butter knife or something, or Mark has a, an old like credit card or driver's license that he uses. And he just scrapes off these scales and you'll get like this papery, papery scale. Yep, there you go. There you have it. That's how we dry and preserve our snake skins. No salt, no borax or anything for use for tabs and bow backing if you want to use that. Thanks for watching.